Hey guys, Nexi here back with another video. Today we're gonna do the review of the Creality CR10 Mini. So stay tuned! Okay, first let's do the unboxing and then build CR10 Mini. I already mentioned how well Creality 3D packed their 3D printers and CR10 Mini is without exceptions. Protection foam kept everything in a place, nice and secure. When you get everything from the box, you end up with up and lower frame part, carton box which contains tools, instructions, control box and 200 grams of PLA filament. And now let's assemble the CR10 Mini. First I free the heated bed from the plastic foil. Then I check the heated bed. Underneath there is a three eccentric adjusting nuts, which need to be adjusted to the proper level. I use the supply tool and I screw them tight one by one to the point that the sliding heated bed is not too tight or not too loose. When you slide the frame, all six rollers wheels need to roll equal and they should not slip. And when you move three adjusting wheels with a hand, they should move under the same force and then you get it perfect. And now just a double check. And it looks nice. Next step is to free Z carriage. I cut the zip ties and I remove the plastic foil. Next I check the bottom screws holes for any left of aluminium metal shavings. I make sure that the holes are nice and clean. Then I place upper part of the frame and I use 4 screws with washer, 2 on each side. Now don't over tie these screws on one side until you add screws on opposite side. Next I install the frame bracket on which is the Z end micro switch. Then I gently screw down flexible coupling screws one by one with the baby steps to make sure that all screws are just right and they're not over tight. If you over tight these screws then it will twist one side of the flex coupling and that will cause wobbling in your prints. Then I move the stepper motor with a hand and I concentrate on the coupling and thread the rod to make sure there is no wobbling. Then I install the Teflon tube, it simply clicks in a place, extruder spring is nice and tight and it feels good. Next step is the wiring. Cable with a metal plug end goes in the back of the control box and it screws down nice and secure. Then I plug heated bed cable. Cable end mark with the eye plugs on the heated bed stepper motor and I stop switch. Next step is extruder, X stepper and stop switch and the last is Z stop switch. And you're done with wiring pretty much. Here I use the zip ties to secure the cables but this is totally optional and you can skip this step if you want. Next I install the spool holder holding with the two screws and I install the filament that I receive in the package. Most people will use this filament and I think it's a fair first to test printer with this cheap PLA filament to see what results we get until we start using some expensive filament. And the last step is the plugging AC cable. And we're done. CR10 Mini is alive. Now let's run some specs and do the overview. CR10 Mini has a build volume of 300 by 220 by 300 mm, so it's a bit smaller than a regular CR10, but is still bigger than the average Prusa i3 kits. It has the same Bowden setup with a 0.4 mm nozzle, which you can replace to other sizes as well. Duck nozzle is upgraded like on the CR10S, and a few plastic parts like end caps and the top bracket are not 3D printed no more, instead they are made of injection molded plastic which is nice. Just like the CR10, frame on the CR10 Mini is made from aluminum rails with V-slots on which roll corresponding V-slot pairing wheels. Heated bed has removable glass which is very nice and you can easily remove the prints without messing up the heated bed. Inside the control box there is a 360 watt power supply with automatic fan speed depending on the load. There is also heated bed external MOSFET just like on the regular CR10. In fact the main difference between the CR10 and the CR10 Mini is in size and the stealth black design with no racing orange or blue strips. Now before the first test print, I heat up the printer and extrude the filament to clean up the nozzle from the factory test black PLA. 
When filament becomes white, I level the printer with the A4 paper, load my G-code and start to print. And my first test print is always hollow cube 20 by 20 mm with the two parameters on the bottom and on the walls. Print speed is at 20 mm a second, layer height is 0.2 and the temperature are 195 degrees on hot end and 55 degrees on heated bed. To make print sticks better on the glass, I use a print affix. After 18 minutes printing was done and now it's time to see our results. I'm very happy to see that the results are no change and the CR10 Mini has exactly the same print quality like the Brick Brother. Indeed, very nice results. Layers are nice and smooth and the feed rates is good. Cooling is a great too. Time to move on on the next print, which is the 3D Benji. By the way, I'm still using the white PLA that I got from the printer. And here we see results on the first 3D Benji, printed in a 0.2mm layer height. Temperature here was 195 degrees on the hot end and 40 degrees on the heated bed. Print speed was 40 mm a second and the travel 100 mm a second. Results are great. There is no imperfection and I really like how this 3D Benji turns out. It's a bit hard to see because of the white color, but I will print 3D Benji a few more times in this review using the other color. My next print is the lighthouse again using this cheap filament that I got with the printer. Results? Again, great. Settings that I use was exactly the same like on the 3D Benji and temperature seems to get right on this type of PLA. Again, it's a bit hard to see all the details on the camera because of the white filament, but I can see every single detail including the tiny windows and the details on the roof and on the rocks. Awesome. Now I load the 3D Benji again and I only change here the layer height to 0.1mm and I use the cheap red PLA filament in case somebody wonder of my retraction speed it's 80mm a second and retraction distance is 6.5mm fan speed is on 90% 3D Benji in red looks very good all details are present, surface is smooth overall very nice quality on this test print on 0.1mm layer height Ok, now we know that the CR10 Mini can print on 0.1mm very good, but how about 0.05mm layer height or the 50 microns? This time I use the more matte color red PLA and I use again the same settings, but I lower the layer height from 0.1mm to 0.05mm. Results are great. CR10 Mini did a great job here, printing in a 50 microns. Surface is very smooth and this 3D Benji looks great. Not that I will use so high print resolution every day, but still it's good to know that CR10 Mini can print in a 50 microns pretty good. This can be very handy for example if you print some small prints or action figures that needs to be printed in the highest possible resolution. I personally don't use so often that high resolution. 0.1mm or 100 microns is enough for me for most of my project. My next print is the cat in the box that I downloaded from the Thingwars from awesome designer called Luby3D. This model is printed in 0.15mm layer height, 0% infill and no support. Print speed is the 45mm a second, temperature was 190 degrees on the hot end and 40 degrees heated bed. Again I used a print affix spray, I used just two parameters on the walls and the results are very good. This model looks great and it's a very easy to print as well. I'm very happy with these results. Now since I mentioned the Luby 3D, we got to print the sorceress. Here I use pretty much the same print settings like before, only I changed the print option, 20% infill and 0.15mm layer height, again with no support. Results are awesome. She is a beauty. I love the sorceress and the Luby did phenomenal job designing this gorgeous 3D model. This is so well printed and I love it. You can see a level of the details that came out perfectly even at 150 microns. I don't found even one imperfection in this print. It looks awesome. Now the Sorceress is not a free 3D model and it cost around 2 US dollars. To my opinion it's totally worth it. Cause it's gorgeous. Now for my next couple of prints I decided to print two vases and the Christmas tree using a Printer Pro Pure filament which is very similar to the wood filament but is a way easier to print with. This pure filament prints just as easy as the PLA and it leaves a rough unique surface and pretty much invisible layers even at 0.25mm layer height. 
Oasis and decorative models look so good when they are printed with this Aprinta Pro Pure filament. I love it. Christmas tree looks so good in this color and this matte surface. This vase looks great too. Very cool surface, invisible layers and nice to touch. Look and feels great. Then I throw some yellow PLA and I print this rocket and it came out absolutely perfect. This rocket is printed in a vase mount in a full 300mm height in just one perimeter and the walls are only 0.4mm thick. Layer height is 0.2mm, print speed was 35mm a second, temperature was 195 degrees and the cooling fan was set to only 50% to make sure that the thin walls won't wobble like on this one that I printed with 100% fan speed. Sometimes you have to lower the fan speed depending on the model you print especially if you print something in a vase mode which is very thin. CRT Mini shows very nice results printing in a vase mode and this rocket looks awesome. And now it's time to get some more details. I use a Printa Pro Premium PLA filament and I print this tower in 0.1mm layer height. Levels of the details are fantastic on this model. These tiny bricks, stairs, corners, edges and the rocks are came out fantastic. I really like the quality of this filament and the color and that's why I decided to print the Moon CD from Kijia from Tingwars. And here it is, Moon CD printed in 100% scale in 0.2mm layer height, print speed was 40mm a second, temperature on hot end was 195 degrees and I used 0 degrees on heated bed thanks to brim option in Acura and a print fix spray. I print this model with 10% infill with no support and print time took 17 hours to complete. Results that I get are really awesome. I love design of this 3D model and I'm really impressed how well this Moon City model is designed and how cool it looks with all these structures and buildings inside the moon. Amazing job Kijia, well done. Now it's time for the speed test. This is a CR10 Mini printing mobile stand in 100mm a second print speed and 200mm a second travel speed. Temperature here that I use is 210 degrees on hot end, 60 degrees on heated bed. Fan speed is set to 100%, filament flow is set to 108%. And now we will see what results we are going to get. And the results are very good. This mobile stand, wall, top and bottom are just two parameters thick. I could use at least three top layers, but even so, very good results indeed. CR10 Mini has a lower mass on heated bed compared to the CR10 and that reduced mass on the i-axis give better results in a speed test than the CR10. And now the noise test. When printer is on idle, noise is around 47 decibel. When printer is printing at full speed, noise is around 59 decibel which is not too bad. Now it's time to test the heated bed. And it was interesting to see on my thermal camera that most of the heat comes first on the right side of the bed and then spread to the left. Heat bed time was pretty good and the CR10 Mini hits 50 degrees under 2 minutes and the maximum temperature without any insulation under the heated bed was 112 degrees, which is very good and you can print ABS on the CR10 Mini even without any modification. Just to confirm, on my thermal camera it shows around 101 degrees on a glass surface, heated bed main cable's temperature after 30 minutes of full stress it was stable on around 41.1 degrees. Control box is a pretty cool and stable and only place under control box where exhaust hot air from power supply is, the temperature peaks around 39 degrees. And now the final thoughts. Just like the CR10 and the CR10S, CR10 Mini is another great 3D printer from Creality 3D. I like this 3D printer because it's so simple design. Frame is strong, very robust and it's very easy to reach all the components. Assembly time is less than 30 minutes, print quality is great and there is a huge community behind CR10 3D printers so there is a many upgrades that you can do in the future too. I have a nothing than a great experience with the CR10 Mini and the only negative side that I can say is a slightly fan noise inside the control box. Adding a better cooling fan could easily make this printer very quiet and I might do that in the future, but even so, it's not too bad. And I have to mention the price. Full size CR10 is just 60 US dollars more expensive than a CR10 Mini and if you don't have a lack of space in your home, then the full size CR10 is a better choice. 
Alright guys, that was my review of the Creality CR10 Mini. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if some of you guys want to order this 3D printer, please have a look in the links in the video description. Until next time, take care and happy printing. Bye bye.